I lollygagged, but it's still early. Early? Oh, we got plenty of Formula One podcasts to listen to on the drive up. I'm at the trailhead now, and I'm I'm in that trailhead days. Pack is loaded, a little light rain. Heading down to the Kekakabic. Gonna walk down and see some parts I haven't seen. Been a while since I've had the pack on my back. Gloomy, rainy, 57 degrees. Four hour, 45 minute drive. Had to stop at a couple of rest areas, stop at the ranger station, get my permit, because I'm uh, heading into the Boundary Waters, which is reopened right now, most of it. I'd say 98% of it. Campfire restriction. I have my canister stove with me, which I don't think I've brought on a trip backpacking in a long time. Brought it canoeing. Haven't carried it. Time to get the pack on and start walking. Try to beat some of this rain. Woo, buddy! Fall is definitely popping up here. I was reading in the news, they said here in Minnesota, our fall is going to be kind of uh, early. <laughs> early. Early. And it's going to be a little bit dull. Oh, Maple King. So over my life as a backpacker, I have walked this trail several times up here in the snowbank uh, lake area and I'm heading south on the snowbank trail which will meet up at the Kekakabic which will head east and you know it's I always find it interesting you know I like walking trails over and over because you see something different every time and there's parts you totally remember and then there's this parts that you don't remember at all or the trail has changed and because it's been a long dry summer so that's why this rain is good up here in Ely and it's good for the fires, which aren't totally out, but like I say, they've opened up most of the boundary waters. Can't have a campfire. Got to use a canister stove. No wood stoves, nothing like that. But, you know, a day like this when it's just sort of drizzly, it's uh, about 59 degrees and overcast. I like walking on these days. These are some of my favorite. How do I look? And finally, the first, first good mushroom I've seen. It's a big one. I gotta say, this beaver dam is usually pretty high. The lowest I've ever seen it, but that's what a drought will do to a state. I love this little spot right here. I can stop here and take a little break and now it's time for a little lunch. I got some wood smoked summer sausage. I got some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and some olives. Have a little nosh and get back to walking. This is real good. This is super good. And this is savory. Mm-hmm. So I know this is about a four mile, maybe four and a third in little walk. And man, I feel I feel awesome. Yes, I said awesome. Just feel good and strong and walking good and enjoying the slight gloom and the mist. So I got a little view here of this uh, beaver dam. Probably get me some water out of there. That doesn't smell too funky. 
There was one back that way. I was going to get some water. It was a little, a little loud. Mm, yes, sir. Mm. We're in no count. I kept moving. But a lot of my little water sources were pretty dry. I expected them to be, and uh, I was right. Time to suck out of my Sawyer suck system. Mm. It's flowing nice. Back flushed it after the last trip, which was the canoe trip. Not a lot of backpack in the summer. I think the last backpacking trip was uh, early spring. Early? And uh, that was the Brule Lake Trail. And then I did the five-day canoe trip. And on the 4th of July, Meg broke her kneecap. So I had to stay home and be her footman, her butler, her driver. But she's good now. She's, uh, she's riding her bike. She had like a miraculous little window of just recovery. And she's uh, rode her bike yesterday for a pretty long ride back on her exercise bike. She's able to swim in the lake and said it's kind of floating on her back. So things are looking up. So it's time to get out here. But, you know, I think today's September the 14th. So it's after Labor Day. And I haven't seen a soul all day. And I love that. I don't really like summer camping. And with, with the fires and... You know, closing down the Spear hiking trail for a while, closing down a lot of the boundary waters. It was, you know, it was the drought, it was hot. And uh, then I did 12 days at the Minnesota State Fair where I didn't do my show. I just announced the daily parade at 2 o'clock, which I've always done. So I just went in to do that. So that, that was pretty easy. But still, you know, I had to be dedicated for 12 days to go do that every day. So finally a little time. Yeah, a lot of the walking on this trail today is just uh, mildly rocky, but uh, weedy. Coming up on Disappointment Lake now. Most of the time I head up here and I, I end up uh, turning to the north. Some great sights, but uh, I'm going to head on down to Keck. Kekakabak is its uh, official name. But we just call it the Keck up here and there was a site I stayed in years ago I think it was Drumstick Lake there were some old saw blades and stuff from the lumber days up here in the logging days I guess they call them uh, I'm starting to feel, kind of feeling that 3.30 in the morning now and it's coming on three in the afternoon. Man, that went fast. Perfectly beat up bucket. Boy, I had to go around some big trees here. But that storm a few years ago <laughs> knocked this big tree down right through camp and just broke a lot of trees. So this is not a very hammock friendly site. There's a little tent pad right here, but there's just one tiny tree. Nothing else to really attach to. I thought about maybe hanging on this, but that's kind of wobbly and low. There's that big tree that fell. Man. The base of it used to sit right in here. And there it is right there now. Wasn't much keeping it attached to the ground. That's scary. But it did make this little nice rock shelf here now. Glad to be here. It's about a six and a half hour walk, maybe seven. I think it's 10 miles, nine, 11. It's really nice and quiet. Might even be a sunset. I'm just glad to be here. All right, I'm gonna get everything pitched up, get some dinner, 
I plan on crawling in that hammock and uh, going to sleep early. Early! Here we go. Superior Gear Starlight. Wilderness Logic 40 degree under quilt. And I'm using the Superior Gear Comforter, which I usually put on as an under quilt there, but I'm trying it as a top quilt this time. The sound of a distant loon. So this lake is called Moyaka. Moyaka. M-O-I. Y-A-K-A. Moyaka. Quiet out here right now, man. Wind totally died. Not that cold right now. It doesn't feel that cold. Let's see what it is. It is. Um... Okay, I know people are going to ask like 15 times, but that is the Thermodrop pocket thermometer. Thermodrop pocket thermometer. Oh, packet gourmet chicken and dumplings. I'm ready for those. Yeah, no alcohol stoves with the fire ban. Back to the old Giga Power. I just don't like that loud noise. I like the out of an alcohol stove. Actually, this stove is pretty darn quiet. Get my food bag for me. It's hanging on a tree. I don't know. Kind of far, kind of not back up that way. Would you, could you, should you? I'd love you to. I just don't want to get out. I'm warm. But I need my breakfast. I need my Medagliadoro instant espresso. Man. I'm going to tell you, the minute I got in this hammock last night, I was asleep. It's probably about <sighs> probably about ten to seven right now. I'ma get up. I don't want to, but so go on and get that food bag for me. Thank you. Well I had to go get it myself. Cause you were just sitting there thinking about it too much. Oh. It's cool this morning. All right, let's reach in here. Like reaching into your Halloween candy bag and pulling out a good kit. And hopefully I'll put my breakfast stuff on top. It's just a matter of what breakfast. That's trash. Those are good little crackers. Let's oh, put toothpaste. That's my salt and pepper. Didn't want to see that. Alright. So, you know what? 
I'm going to eat the first breakfast to pull out. What do you think about this one? And mainly kind of having a meat and cheese breakfast. Look at all that. There it is. Right there. Thing is leaning. Shim it up a little bit. It's been a long time since I've laid in the hammock and listened to a canister stove. And this is my spirit animal out there, the red squirrel, making sounds and that's disrupting it. Well, here's what I'm having this morning on the coffee front. After my experimentations, with pour overs and everything else, and I'm sticking with my Padagliadoro Instant Espresso just for ease and quickness. I like it. The one thing I didn't uh, enjoy about the pour over was waiting a little bit and then dealing with the filter in the grounds and having to go get rid of those. That's just one extra chore, and I don't like that. I'm a simple man, I like it easy. Okay. This is breakfast today. The hard boiled egg. And the meat. Feels like a mess in that little silver bag. Now the old Medagliadoro, man, it's got a little head on it. Best part of waking up is Medagliadoro in your foster cup. Now we're talking. Life just got a little better. Sure is hot. <laughs> boiled eggs. Hard boiled. Not soft boiled. <clears throat> Though I do prefer a soft boiled egg. Like the queen and the royal family enjoys. Oh man, this ain't a peanut butter pop torch. Oh, imagine the disappointment that I'm feeling right now. I don't know why I thought it was. It's strawberry. Well, I mean, I'm eating it. <laughs> so let me tell you about the bugs. With a lack of bugs. That may be one mosquito last night. He landed on my face and I reached up and touched him and he died. Got the half bug net rigged up on the superior gear. Hammock. Did not deploy it. But it'll just zip in on both sides. Goes about right here. And just drops down over the front of you. A little less to carry. I'll show it to you. A little later in this trip. But no, even walking yesterday was a bug-free day. I mean, there was some bees and stuff like that, but mosquito-wise, nil. So I was laying here and it was pretty uh pretty still last night. And the man, I don't know, woke me up. Big heard the tart flapping and stuff. Just a big wind. For like ten minutes, man. And then it uh abated. Oh glory. 
the medallion door is this espresso is kicked in. It is time for the morning constitutional. I'll take a little looky-see at my map here. I've had this map since the year 2000. It's a McKenzie map. I always like this one because it has a lot of highlights. My Yucca Lake. And I'm camped about right here. So, today's route is going to take me around the Old Pines Trail. Alright, that's the Old Pines. I'll see a high ridge, large white pines. I'll be cutting by Allsworth Lake. And then I'm going across what they call Disappointment Mountain. Not a disappointment for those of us in Minnesota who don't have big mountains. And then possibly camp either here or go up here to one of the sites I know are pretty great on Disappointment Lake. And then let that take me on back down, get on the keck, and head on down that way. Trekking along on the old Pines Trail. I'm excited because I've never done this one. Always wanted to see it. I don't know much about it. it. May just be a scenic one. Campsites? Unknown. To be determined. Loving it so far. Got a beautiful sunny day. A little humid. Coolish. Woo, buddy! And the trail goes that way. Just came that way. So I did find a campsite over here on Allsworth Lake. And it is up the hill here. First glance, doesn't look too hammocky. Tent-wise, yeah. Spider webs all over my face this morning. Doesn't look like it's been used in quite a while. That's Old Pines heading east, and that out there is the west end of Allsworth Lake. Now we go across this beaver dam into the unknown, which looks like it's right up that way. I love this, man. I love coming to places when you got water on both sides of you and a cool breeze coming through. Woo, buddy! Got across that beaver dam. It's such a nice spot with a nice breeze. I thought I'd just stop and have a little nosh. I walked pretty pretty hard yesterday. I didn't stop, but really one time I took one other little short break just to get some water. So today, because I know where I'm going back to, I'm gonna um take a few more stops and eat a little bit more of this food like this Reggiano cheese here mm -hmm. Mike the garter snake just relaxing. Look at that. How you doing there, kid? Hey, 
Hey, you doing there, kid? All right, I'll move on. Uh, getting on about five miles now, and uh, other than coming to a few little lakes and a couple little vistas, walking this trail, and, and even yesterday, you're in the Long Green Tunnel. I'm not sure I'm at the top of Disappointment Mountain yet or not. If I am, there's really no view. But I'm loving it because I love the woods. I don't need a view all the time. The woods are the view. Just being in the woods, checking things out as you walk along, looking at the ground, looking at the pines, looking at the birches, looking at the blowdown, which hasn't been too bad. Um, a lot of the little springs and stuff are dry out here. So, that's the report. Is backpacking fun? I don't know if that's the word all the time. Satisfying, an adventure, a challenge. Uh, it's great today because my mind is just a little more blank. I'm not thinking about the world. Yeah, I got some wolf poop. Love the wolf. Come face to face with him twice on the trails. The one I got on video from a long time ago. I'll put a little link in the description box below if you've never seen it. It's pretty fast. It was crossing the river. I was going down to film it. It saw me. It took off. My heart was going. I enjoyed the Old Pines Trail. Definitely a great walk. And I think I missed this little spur trail that goes to the top of Disappointment Mountain. But by the time I realized that, I'd already gotten about half a mile away. So, eh, something to look at later. And I hit the Disappointment and came south. And there's this, uh, I was out of water. So I wanted to get water somewhere here on Disappointment. And I came into this camp I stayed in before. No one is here. Got water. And uh, decided to drop my pack. And I took my boots off already. So I have a little drying station going on over here. And it's just gorgeous here. So as I sit here with the wind blowing on me, oh yeah, I got those wet socks off. I'm staying here, man. It's supposed to start raining kind of hard about 3.30 tonight. 3.30 a.m. that is. So that don't bother me. I'll check my uh, weather report on the inReach. I sure do like laying here. Listening to the bees buzz around me. But no mosquitoes. Have to hang my hammock pretty soon, but I'm, I'm quite content right here. Feel good. Uh, you have to be careful. <laughs> Man, I slipped a couple times today on a wet rock. And I gotta say, even at the age of 63, I still got a pretty fast... Uh, uh, my, my twitch muscles are still pretty fast. I caught myself, and uh, I'll hand it to my Black Diamond Flick Lock hiking poles, too. They helped. And yesterday, too, I had a couple of those just real fast little slips on a wet rock or root or something. And uh, it's pretty amazing how your body will react really quickly to regain its stability. Self-maintenance. Even like just coming and laying around right here and just... Uh, Taking it easy. <laughs> I even come to get away from chores, but there's so many chores with backpacking that maybe it's a moot point. Set it up, tear it down, cook some dinner, dry your stuff, get some water, take care of your feet. Okay, good talk. Bye-bye. In the all in all, this is where I get my peace. Ah, some clouds coming up now. That bright sun is going away. I can actually sit out here and not go, eh, eh. but it sure was nice for drying stuff out. So I think my next step here is to uh, at least get the hammock up and have myself a cup of tea. Hey, I, I didn't mean to talk your ear off so much. It's just sometimes when you're out in the woods by yourself, 
uh, you start feeling a little prolific and just want to get some thoughts out. You know, the joy of a little wildflower, it doesn't take much, but that, that really gets me back here. That's the thing about my dad when he died. He said, don't ever put those old stinky sweet flowers on my grave or plastic flowers. He said, bring me wildflowers. Gonna go from this tree to that tree. Pretty much, I'm pretty certain that's where I was the last time I was here. Because I remember looking at those roots and the little mice running up my feet right there. I treasure this stuff sack. It's one of the old Spear hammock. One of the innovators of camping hammocks. Ed Spear. I brought the old half bug net this time. Got a piece of shock cord that hooks up down in here. Right there where that little beaner is. Right by the ridge line right there. And the shock cord and you can tighten or loosen that. And this front part just drapes down right down there. So when you're in your top quilt, that'll keep bugs from coming in. And that way you've only got to tote half a bug net. We don't have very many bugs at home. I assumed the bugs up here would not be bad. Like I said, one mosquito last night. I didn't use it. But just in case, but I don't think I'm going to use it. So I just have it kind of pulled back. I just undid the little beaner down there, unzipped it. And it'll just sit right there inside my Black Bishop bag. And if I do need it, get it out, clip on, zip in. All right, I got my tarp rigged up now. It's hanging in a set of snake skins up here. People think, uh, you know, just because it's mesh, your tarp's going to dry in it. That's a myth. It, that doesn't happen. It just helps to wrangle your tarp. On a windy day, you can lit out half at a time, and I just like it for storage. I can slip it up, roll it up, put it in this little stuff sack, done, and even just preset it like that. And in case you're kind of new to the channel, or just new to hammocking, or new to tarps, this is kind of how they work. So you just, there's one half. I just pull it back, and that releases one half of my Tarp got kind of wet last night. A lot of moisture in the air. And out the other half. Bring the tarp out. There you go. The noise! The noise! I can't hear the loons. I just put my earth sack, my, my food bag there for a little blockage. As I understand, according to Ginger Baker, put your tea bag in first and pour your water over the tea. Ouch, 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 hot. As opposed to Pouring your water in and then dunking your tea bag. There. I am very cute. Give it a little steep. So thanks, Ginger, you persnickety fella. Tonight I am eating Next Mile Meals. That's a coconut chicken curry, and that's some food to fuel your next adventure. It's kind of a keto meal, really low in carbs. You can see right there, the carbs are only about 12 grams. Sugars are low. And I hardly brought any candy. I brought one candy bar. And 
I'll show you that. The Kavinki bar. This is uh, from the Czech Republic, and I'd like to thank you, Milan, for sending me that. Delicious, wafery. I split one of these with Meg a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it is uh, just glorious, glorious. Kavinki bar. Mmm, Milan. That is so good. Mmm. Thank you for that, ma'am. So good. And my wife's family, uh, their heritage is from the Czech Republic. Yeah, the next mile meal. That was pretty good. It was a good curry. It was like curry without any rice. Had some peas in it, some green peas. A little bit of peanuts in there, uh, chicken. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now, on rice, it'd be spectacular, but that's not the point of the meal, I guess. Uh, uh, that kind of hurt. Oh, I think I cracked the sternum. so ready for a brew. I don't know what's in one of these trees over here. It must be some sort of beetle or something, but other than when it's raining, I can hear it going. It's definitely gnawing some wood. I hope it's not the tree I'm hanging on. So we had a lightning storm last night. I should say thunder and lightning. Because with one comes the other. And that was kind of cool. Yes! Okay, so Bobo's Toaster Pastry. Chocolate, peanut butter, Pop-Tart. Organic kind of healthy version. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that looks mighty healthy. Wow. I don't see a lot of enriched flour there. Man, this is like... I don't think it's stiff. Mm. Well. Hmm. Um... Uh, let me give it a few bites for a uh, past judgment on it, but maybe it needs to be dumped in the coffee. I wish it had some frosting on it. It's heavy and dense. This is like if you uh, you had that hippie aunt or uncle. It was concerned about your health. It was trying to make you a better pap tart. I'm going to get my glasses in a while and read what's in it. Um, I guess I'm just going to think about it this way. You're giving me some nutrition. Look at my glasses here. Let me look at that pack. After this, though, I get my, my eggs and meat. Mm. It's vegan. It's gluten-free. 
it's non-GMO. Okay. I don't know. I'm not even sure it's really worth the calories right now, but... Okay. <clears throat> The Bobos, which I kind of like because I got a cousin called Bobo. Wasn't that bad? I mean, I guess if you're vegan and dairy free and non GMO type person and you want a peanut butter toaster pastry, there you go. Put some food in my stomach and I'm alright with that. But now it's time to wash that down with a beef stick. Mm. Delightful. Mm. Got a hard talk while you're eating a hard boiled egg. Gonna have myself a second coffee. Gonna have the drip it. It's a pour over or a drip through. And this was sent to me by Milan from the Czech Republic along with that candy bar that I ate half of last night. Thank you. I can't remember how to say thank you in Czech. So I'll just say thank you. Let's get a little water ready. Yeah, there's that little rig right there. Looks like some crazy spider. Big white spider crawling in my cup. And then I, what I do is just pour the water right over that. Oh, Shug's excited. I aim to do this very carefully. Let's see how this goes. I'm pouring. It's dripping. I guess this is the way. All right, well, I followed the instructions. It said pour right over the top. So, uh, tear, open, put it on, pour. Slowly pour the boiled water over the coffee. Let's give it a go. It's the only way to know on the Czech Coffee Show. From the BWCA, hey, hey, where the wind blew all night. And it made my hammock sway, and it made the trees dance. But I was warm inside my top quilt and my under quilt. Yeah. Smooth. <clears throat> um, I would say it tastes like a... Uh, <clears throat> Let's see, not a dark roast, that's for sure. Tastes like a good medium roast. Flavorful. Has a sweet tone to it. I taste uh, juniper and salt. And Oreo Blizzard. Very good. It blew all night, man. I had the tarp pitched down pretty tight. And uh, actually put on my underquilt protector. Brought that because uh, I've weighed before with this tarp right here, my DIY Black Crow tarp, and the underquilt protector, which weighs about six ounces. Those two together are less than my fully dressed Superfly. Using this um, Superior Gear comforter, which works as a... Uh, snap on under quilt or a top quilt very comfortable very warm enjoyed it you know, it was about this morning was about 50 degrees so it wasn't as cold as yesterday which i think was 43 and uh i like the fabric it's made of it feels real nice no cold at all uh, it's 40 degree under quilt right here from wilderness logics god bless you marty that company's no longer in business because marty passed 
So if you ask, this one isn't available anymore. And uh, just just to show you, you don't have to use the Superior Gear underquilt. You can use any old underquilt on here. But this one's small and light. It's a partial, so it just goes down to just past my calves. Or maybe just past the backs of my knees, whatever those are called. I think it's called the back of your knee. It's called your uh, back door patella. Uh, and, you know, the underquilt protector, really, like, imagine you're wearing a down jacket, a light down jacket, and you're out in 50-degree weather, and the wind is blowing really hard, and you're going to feel that wind taking some of the heat away out of your body that that jacket's trying to hold on to, no matter what fabric it's made out of, even if it's a windproof fabric, which it's usually not because down likes to breathe a little bit. And then you just throw on a little uh, outer shell to break the wind. I <laughs> said break wind. Um, that's basically what the underquilt protector does for me. Didn't get damp at all in the rain, but just holds in my body heat, which uh, the down is captured, hanging under me. And I could pull it up a little higher and kind of keep that wind off my face last night in any rain spray, because it was blowing, man. My eyes were shut, and I was in dreamland by 9 o'clock. Which I wanted, just to come out and get some good sleep. Walk a little bit. this windy morning snake skins came in mighty handy I always use them I always put them in a stuff sack about that big Well, I just passed the junction down to Benizi Lake campsites, and I think I'm just going to head on to the car because, you know, it's not very late in the day, and I just don't feel like hanging around camp all day. And I got a couple of other options, but same thing. I could go there, but I'm just going to be dilly dallying. So I think I'll just hit the car, get on home. I got stuff to do anyway. I had two great nights. That's good enough for me. Better no nights at all. On where we go. Got maybe uh maybe five miles, maybe maybe six miles from here. That's the trail on up Snowbank, which is on the east side of Snowbank Lake. Cat goes that way. Keck goes this way, and that's the way I'm going. I love that trail marker. It is just beat up, a little scrawling in it. 
There's something nice and prehistoric about it. I'm at about the mile seven and a half mark now. Got about a mile and a half to go to get to the Jeep. Mm. Very little water. I want to drink it all right now. But I've got to use water discipline. I have a big gallon of water in the Jeep. That's all I can think about. Feel a little pasty. I did get some, uh, I did get some water out of a beaver dam back there. Uh, I don't want to drink it. It's got shag nasties floating in it. Tastes funky. Uh, I don't trust that my Sawyer filter is really getting all that out. And I drank a few swigs, so in about three days I'll see how it did. But that, that's desperation water. I ain't that desperate. I didn't want to spend all day in a camp hanging around doing nothing. So I walked on out and got to my Jeep. And now I feel like something. All is secure in Secular 7. So my walk out was about 8.53 miles. At time moving, I don't think that's quite right. It says I walked 5.15. And I did not stop that much. Woo, buddy! Just got home. Drove four hours, 45 minutes. Never got out of the car once. Didn't stop to pee. Didn't stop to get any food. I had a full tank of gas at the trailhead. I got a piece so bad, bad, bad. I got to go, go, go. Woo, buddy! All secure in Sector 7.